What's good everybody, it's CJ Beats. We're back at it again today. Today we're going to sidechain kicks and 808s in Logic Pro X right after this. Thanks for joining guys. So today, as I mentioned before, we're going to sidechain kicks and 808s. A lot of the times when I'm doing my live sessions and you guys send me your beats to listen to and critique, I notice that a lot of the beats have uh, distortion on the low end. You know, um, there's good distortion on 808s, but there's also distortion that happens when you have too much happening on the low end, okay? So when you have, for example, a kick and an 808 occupying the same frequency ranges. And what happens is when two of those sounds are in those same frequency ranges, uh, they can clash. Uh, causing distortion. So today I'm going to show you um, how to sidechain your 808s with the kick to create room for that kick uh, in the 808. So let's have a listen to a beat that I just made and then we're going to get into how I sidechain that kick in 808. You can already hear while that kick is dropping. Okay, let's click on that 808 um, channel strip that I have here in my mixer and we'll take a look at some of the plugins that I have here. The first plugin is the FabFilter Pro C2 and uh, this is the tool that I'm using to duck the 808 every time that kick hits so that those two frequencies don't clash, right? So I'm gonna solo out uh, this 808 and I'm also gonna solo out my kick so that we could see what's happening. Let's bring it back to the beginning here and let's just loop off a section like that. And you could tell like the threshold may be a little too much. I can bring that up a little bit. And uh, if I were to unsolo the kick and just let the 808 play, you could see that the entire waveform of the 808 is not being ducked. But when I turn that kick back on, it ducks the 808 every time that kick hits. And that allows for both of those, uh, you know, sounds that are in the same frequency range to live together, you know, harmoniously, I guess you could say. So let's talk about how I actually uh, set up my logic session here to create this side chain. As you can see here, I have my, uh, my 808 on this channel strip and then I have my kick on this channel strip. So the first thing you want to do is bust your kick drum into a, a separate auxiliary channel. So we can use that in the FabFilter Pro C2 uh, to recognize that sound, right? So all I got to do up here in your output line right here is follow that and then go to bus and then select, uh, you know, a new bus. Right now, mine's going to bus two, which is auxiliary 17, which is this guy right here. So all I'm doing is basically telling uh, Logic that I want this sound to be routed into a separate channel strip. And from that channel strip that we created, Pro C2 is going to be able to detect that signal. So the next thing you want to do is actually bring in this uh, Pro C2. So I'm going to um, go ahead and mute those plugins that I have, and I'm going to bring in a new instance of the Pro C2, which is under Fab Filter, Pro C2, and Mono. First things first, we're going to turn on our sidechain. We're going to hit external. Then up here in the sidechain, you're going to go to bus, and then you're going to um, this is a little tricky because as you can see here, these bus names are not the same, but we know that uh, the bus was, uh, we sent it to bus number two, so we're gonna select bus number two. And from there, uh, if you hit play now, it's already going to sidechain uh, that signal. So let me uh, solo out that 808 one more time so we can hear both sounds. And you can see that it's already ducking the 808 as the kick is playing. Great, now we have some more tools available to us inside this plugin to see how much of that side chain we actually want to happen, right? So using the threshold, um, I can lower the threshold and that will actually cut deeper into the 808. And you have to play around with it a little bit so that you can find a happy medium between both the, uh, the kick and the 808. From there, uh, what I also like doing is working with my attack and release. 
the attack will determine basically how fast that side chain will happen and the release uh, basically tells it how fast it should stop so if i were to bring this back to very fast you could see that the side chain is enabled much quicker now i can also enhance the release on this and that would mean that the side chain is actually getting longer so again you could use that as a tool to find the happy medium between both sounds so i actually liked the uh, a little bit of a slower attack maybe 0.18 milliseconds and uh, a release of maybe 200 milliseconds so now that you guys know how to sidechain using these tools uh, there are a few enhancements that you could do uh, you know to make your 808 sound more this is more of a bonus but um, i like using the decapitator uh by sound toys and uh, you could take a look at the settings here i have the drive set up to about three i selected uh e and style with a steep high cut filter uh the the tone of it is more dark so i'm gonna have to turn this guy off so you can hear we'll just solo out again just the 808 this is without it this is with it a lot of the times music is listened to on like laptop speakers, earbuds, things of that nature, and they don't really carry bass that well. So in order for, uh, you know, the music consumer to actually listen or hear the bass, uh, adding distortion to your bass uh, helps a lot because that will enhance the mid range of that 808 so that smaller speakers can also um, can also play those frequencies. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial today. I definitely had a lot of fun making it. If you have any questions, comments, or whatever it might be, put those in the comment section below. If this video helped you out, I would highly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe and that bell button so you're notified anytime I upload some new content. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I do live streams where I actually uh, critique and listen to your beats. We do those once a week, um, generally on Fridays. So if you want to be notified next time I go live, make sure to hit that subscribe and that bell button. You could also follow me on Instagram. It's at CJBeatsNYC so that you're notified the next time I go live or I post a new tutorial. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name is CJ. I'm out for now. Peace.